Hello chess friends. Imagine for a moment that you are an international master of chess. You've managed to get your blitz rating up over 2500 on chess.com and now you've been fortunate enough to get a game with the great Magnus Carlsen. This is the exact situation that an IM by the name of Alberto Santos Flores found himself in recently playing black and facing e4 for Magnus Carlsen to which he responded with e6, the French defense. And would you expect Carlsen to engage you in your mainline opening theory here if you were playing black? Well, if you've been observing his games lately, then his next move should come as no surprise to you. B3, which is a pretty rare move, and for good reason. Everything we know about the opening says, get your big double pawn center with D4 if your opponent allows you to, but Carlsen knows he's going to have his best chance of winning this game quickly if he gets his opponent out of familiar territory as soon as possible. Flores responds sensibly with d5, attacking the pawn on e4, and Carlsen ignores it. He plays bishop to b2, which is actually a sound sacrifice according to Stockfish, which says black's best move is not even to take the pawn. It's recommending to go for development with knight to c6. But if you're black and you're a human, you're going to want Carlsen to prove it. You're going to play d takes e4, right? And that's not a bad move. The position's about equal. Carlsen's going to get that pawn back. He starts with knight to c3, hitting that pawn. You have a couple ways to defend that pawn as black. You could go f5, but this weakens your king side a little bit. So what Flores plays is knight to f6. And best here for white would be to play queen to e2, according to the engine. Just increasing pressure on the pawn. It's going to eventually be picked up. You can play bishop to b4 as black, holding up knight takes e4 for a moment due to the threat to the d2 pawn. But after white castles, white will be able to round up this pawn at his leisure. The position's pretty much equal. But Carlsen gets a little provocative and instead plays g4 here, just looking to attack the defender of the pawn. And again, Stockfish says to just let the pawn go with knight to c6. And if g5 is played, kicking this knight, then white's going to have a hard time justifying moving this pawn twice just to get it to g5 so early in the game. Black is the one with a bit of an advantage in that case. But Flores again played like a human. He played the move that I would probably play, h6, just holding up g5. But now we see queen to e2, bishop to b4, which is similar to the line I just showed you. You can't take the pawn yet due to the threat to d2. So Carlsen first castles. We have queen to e7 now from Flores. He's now planning bishop to a3. He wants to eliminate this bishop, which could be a dangerous piece in the future, pointed at his king side. It's not a bad idea. But Carlsen plays king to b1. The whole point is that bishop to a3 here, which is what Flores plays, does not pin the bishop to the king. Since the king is no longer on c1, Carlsen can drop his bishop back to a1. He wants to hang on to that bishop. Now a5 from Flores, going all out for the king side assault, looks pretty promising. I think I'd be feeling pretty good here and would probably start having some fantasies about checkmating the greatest player on earth. But Carlsen just coolly captures on e4. And after knight takes e4, queen takes e4. Now that the knight is off of c3, the bishop is hitting the pawn on g7. And Flores just ignores it, playing a4, really going after Carlsen's king. But that is not the best move. Again, the engine said knight c6 was better, and I will show you why in just a moment. Carlsen captures on g7, and at this point, black has but one move that doesn't lose. Take a minute, look at this position, see if you can find black's only move to save his game. The fact that I asked you to try to find the right move should clue you into the fact that the obvious rook to g8 is not working. After queen to h7, what are you doing with this rook? You're going to have to sack the exchange. You could try to open things up on the king side here by taking, but the engine is saying that white can defend. Try to get the queen over here to do something. White can just develop. You try to line something up on the A file. There's always queen to A1 here. So that is just no good for black, who actually needed to play F5. A double attack on the white queen and the bishop on G7. After which white can defend with queen to D4 or queen to E5, both of which wouldn't have been possible if the knight was on C6. That's why Stockfish preferred that move. In which case the white queen could only move to a4 to counterattack the bishop here. That is if knight c6 had been played instead of a4. But in this position, if you were to try knight c6, could be pinned with the bishop. Then the rook can move to g8. 
we could see bishop takes c6, pawn takes, bishop can go to f6, hitting the black queen. And white is better here, but black still has a game. But what we actually saw in the game, played by Flores, was a takes b3. Thinking that the danger to Carlson's king is somehow sufficient to justify dropping a whole rook, which Carlson gladly accepts with bishop takes a8. And now we see b takes a2 check. But after king a1, Flores has nothing. Black is busted here. Knight c6 is played. Bishop b5, bishop to d7, and now knight to f3. We have queen to c5 attacking the bishop on b5. Carlson defends with queen to c4. Doesn't mind giving Flores the pawn on f2 because here comes rook h to f1. Getting on that half open file with tempo on the queen. Which goes to g2 and now we have knight to e5 hitting f7. It's taken out, bishop takes, and now c6. Uh-oh, is that bishop on b5 trapped? Absolutely, but does Carlson mind? Hell no, not when he has queen to f4. And if you are foolish enough as black to take this bishop on b5, then there's going to be queen takes f7 check, king goes to d8, and now rook f3 is a very nasty move. Threatening rook to d3, also threatening to take on a3 with mating threats by the queen and bishop using the dark squares and the weak back rank. The game will end very soon. So Flores does not take the bishop on b5, but he plays something just as bad. He castles. What's wrong with that? Well, unfortunately, this walks right into a forced checkmate in five moves. See if you can now spot the move Carlson made in this position that forces a mate in five. Well, if you said bishop to b8, you are incorrect. Though you should give yourself some credit because this does force mate, but it takes six moves. Here's how the line goes. White is, of course, threatening queen to c7 check mate, which black will delay by making a series of desperate checks. Bishop to b2 check, king takes b2 a1 queening the pawn the king takes and now we have e5 blocking the queen so the pawn is simply taken out and now your only move to delay mate by one move is queen takes h2 the queen's taken and mate will be coming on the next move that is mate in six but let me show you the mate in five that carlson found which begins with queen to a4 threatening to come into a8 with checkmate now I should point out real quick that trying to give the king some breathing room by moving your light squared bishop to e8 mates very quickly. Queen to a8 check, king to d7, and now queen takes b7. That is check mate. So if black wants to delay mate the longest and actually get the mate in five, he plays some of the same moves we saw in the last line. Bishop to b2 check, king takes, queen's the pawn, the pawn's taken. But in this case, black does not have the move e5 to delay mate by one move, like we saw in the last line, and he does not have queen takes h2. All he can do here now is play bishop to e8, which delayed mate by only one move, queen to a8 check, king to d7, and now queen takes b7 check mate. So that is how the game would end if black were to allow white to play it out to its logical conclusion. But that's not what we saw in the game. At this point here, after Magnus Carlsen played queen to a4, Santos Alberto Flores ran out of time, presumably desperately trying to find himself a way out of the predicament he had got himself into, to no avail. So there you have it, a 2500 rated international master getting completely brutalized by Magnus Carlsen despite a valiant effort going all out for a kingside attack. You can't really blame him, but sadly it was just not backed by sound calculation, resulting in in a completely lost position for black by move 12. So thank you for watching. Please like and or subscribe to support the channel, and I will see you next time.